Dirk Gratze eats meat, but only game he's hunted himself. He'll travel, but not on planes. And he's helping revert industrial wasteland back to nature. These are just some of the steps the German entrepreneur is taking to fully erase his carbon footprint within the next 30 years. I thought, what could be worse for my kids than leaving behind nothing but trash and emissions? Graz is willing to spend a lot of money to prevent that. Will his green gamble pay off? Dirk Gratze is a hunter, out of passion and conviction. He's responsible for this patch of forest, so he's allowed to hunt here. The game he shoots is now the only meat his family eats. Here, Emil, here. The ecological footprint of a wild boar I shoot is almost nil. To use something that exists in nature without breeding or raising it like we do in our meat production is in my view the most ecological form. Gratzl knows the precise environmental impact of his hunting because five years ago he had scientists at a Berlin university calculate his carbon footprint. It was here, in his hunting blind, that his Green Zero project began. I sat here on a Friday evening in the fall and thought over and over, what is my relationship to nature, to creation? And time and again, the answer was, I'm one of the reasons it's disappearing and being harmed. Grazer says he was once a climate sinner. In his former life as a busy IT entrepreneur, he flew a lot on business, ate and bought whatever he wanted to. And his car of choice was an old Porsche. I always drove big cars which had a lot of horsepower, and I really enjoyed that. Later, I bought a vintage car, an old Porsche. It was the fulfillment of a childhood dream, and I spent hours motoring around for no reason other than just driving it. That's something I can no longer imagine myself doing today. Kratzel resolved to radically change his life in three important areas, mobility, energy, and food. He no longer flies and drives as little as possible. He's cut his personal consumption of water and electricity by close to half, and his diet is mainly vegan. That's moved him closer to his goal of achieving carbon neutrality. But Kratzel wanted to know exactly how close. He tabulated his whole life, everything he did and owned, from his car down to paper clips. It took three months. What do I eat? What do I drink? Where do I go? The worst thing was when I had to document all my material possessions. I had to input every single item in my house, everything I owned, this computer, this cell phone, everything, into a huge spreadsheet. And not just what it is, but what it's made of, how it was made, how long I've used it, and what I'll do with it when I don't need it anymore. On average, people get a new smartphone every two years. Its raw materials often come from South America and Africa, are shipped to China where the phone is assembled, then shipped again and sold. Dirk Gratze found he had some 16,000 possessions. He vowed to change his life and end his thoughtless consumption. I managed to reduce my carbon footprint in various categories by 70, 60, 60, 80 percent. Not content just to cause less harm now, he also aims to make amends for his past sins. Dirk Gratze used to produce more than twice as many greenhouse gas emissions as the average German. Now he emits just six to seven tons per year. However, in India or Brazil, the average person produces less than two tons yearly. That I'm still so far away from what my global budget should be shows the magnitude of the challenges we face. Dirk Gratze meets his son Felix at a market. Though he doesn't see himself as being a perfect environmental warrior, he tries to buy mainly organic foods. Where are the apples from? They're from the region. 
Yeah. They haven't traveled far, but I'll have to check. Okay. The apples are from the Netherlands. Will that set him back? We're closer to the Netherlands than the Lower Rhine, so I think that's okay. And a conventionally produced local fruit or vegetable has a worse footprint than an organic one that comes from farther afield. Lunch with his family is on the agenda. Dirk Gratze is married and has five children. It's a big relief that Dirk doesn't try to interfere in what we eat. So it's really quite easy for us. Of course, we hear about the interesting stuff, we listen to what he tells us and what he's working on. Naturally, that also changes our approach to nutrition and how we shop for food in a very positive way. Then comes the fact I'm from the younger generation, which is more concerned with sustainability and climate in general. So there was already a certain interest there to start with. I learned more from you than you overtook us. <laughs> Do you ever long for your old, simple life with all its comforts? Absolutely not. I don't think my life has lost any of its comforts or quality through these changes. Rather, I've gained a lot. Today, when I'm out buying a few groceries, I do that with a different consciousness, and I think that's positive. It's no longer self-evident to just throw something into my shopping cart. Instead, I'm really conscious of what I'm doing. I know the ecological cost of each product, and that's something which enriches my life. His wife Heike is waiting at home. And their son Niels stops by. Wow. Even though his sons have much smaller budgets than their father, they still buy mainly organic food. How do they do it? I used to spend way more on consumer goods, bought many more things and threw them away, and used far more food because I sometimes shopped poorly. So through the change towards more sustainability, my life has become much cheaper. Today the family is cooking and eating a vegetarian meal together. But it wasn't always this way. Mother Heike did most of the cooking while Dirk helped at Christmas or sometimes on weekends. Niels and Felix confess to still being big meat eaters, though they say the game their parents serve here now is better than the beef or chicken they ate before. The Gratzel's hound, even, dines almost exclusively on meat Dirk has hunted himself. Yet even all these changes aren't enough to make reparations for Dirk's previous environmental sins. According to his carbon accounting, he's caused around 300,000 euros worth of damage. So Gratze has purchased this industrial wasteland in the Ruhr Valley to return it to nature. The CO2 it captures should offset his carbon footprint to date. Yeah, also here werden sie you won't be able to do much more here. This is where the makeshift office container stood. Of course, the piles of rubble will be removed. The demolition work is pretty much done. Now they're just clearing away the debris. The 10-hectare plot of land includes a forest and some small ponds. But most of the land still lies fallow. That's to change in future. The idea is that it should be surrounded by forest, as you see it now. But the whole central area will be preserved as open countryside. So here you'll see butterflies and dragonflies flying around, hear grasshoppers chirping. If we're lucky, a tree pipit will settle here and sing its song, and at night natterjack toads will make their mating calls. That's the ecologist's vision. And we'll have a beer to celebrate. <laughs> Barbecue in summer. It's an idyllic vision, though only the rich can afford to atone for their climate sins by purchasing an old mine. I think it's better than if I spent the same money collecting Porsches. Here, everyone benefits. When I'm no longer alive, folks can still go for walks here. 
On my deathbed, I hope it'll be a consolation that I haven't just consumed stuff and produced emissions, but maybe been able to give something back, too. Dirk Gratze was born and grew up in the Ruhr, a region known more for mining than nature conservation. Yet this is where his company Heimaterbe is situated. His firm gives other businesses the chance to offset the environmental damage they cause. Gratze's clients include a big German drugstore chain, if I produce a deodorant, like this one here, then the production of this article has an environmental impact. Our client let a life cycle assessment be performed on this article, which came up with a financial sum. Heimat Erbe invests exactly that amount of money in the ecological upgrade of a piece of land that's in bad shape. Critics call such efforts greenwashing and accuse companies of just trying to buy themselves a green conscience. But Grazza says his projects are painstakingly calculated and have proven effects. The standard we employ was specified by Berlin's Technical University. We didn't come up with it ourselves. We try to ensure our work is backed up by science as much as possible and offer full disclosure. Activists are demanding that companies assume more responsibility for the environmental damage they cause. Graze has already accepted personal responsibility and is pleased with the results, like the return of grasshoppers to a place where, the previous year, there were none. It's come a long way already. It's great to see how fast nature can recover. Still, Dirk Graze estimates it will take another 30 years to fully erase his own carbon footprint. Until then, he hopes his business will help make others more eco-friendly. It's all a huge adventure that will continue to occupy me in the coming years and decades, because it'll take a while to neutralize my carbon footprint. Business-wise, I have big plans and great employees. What we do is increasingly popular. Many folks are developing an interest in sustainability, so I've got a few things planned for the last third of my life.